Hi, Nicola Raskam here, back for another in the Ask the Data Governance Coach video series. And today's question is all about critical data elements and how much data do we have to hold about them? So I think it's a really good question because it is important to understand that we cannot put the same level of data governance over all data that we have in our organization. There is probably neither the appetite nor the resource to do that, and nor would it probably bring enough benefits. So we need to make sure that we're working out which is our most important data and putting most of our efforts on that. And I don't think anybody would disagree with that, but I can understand the question as well. That's great, but how do we go around doing that? So I think there's quite often the temptation to believe that the data governance team are responsible for finding the critical data. And I, I would challenge that. I would say that, you know, really, would you expect one person or a very small number of people in your organization to know every single piece of data and to know which is the most important? I would actually counter that by saying, well, surely it's the people in the business that understand what data is the most important to them. So um, I think it's really important that you get the business to identify what is important to them. So we need to do this in a consistent and, and, and um, logical manner. So what I would say is that you should agree some set criteria for how you're going to identify which is um, the most important data to your organization. And there are many ways of doing this. Um, but, you know, what, one thing I would say is, is probably aim for three different levels. You could have critical, important and everything else um, but it's all or like a high medium and low but it's really good to have three levels because if you have a high that's the really important data and that's where you put all your effort medium is data that's fairly important but we'd like some controls and understanding of it but we don't need to go quite so overboard as we do the really important stuff and everything else we might never get to do data governance and everything else. Maybe when we've sorted out the other things, but we've clearly identified that it's it's really low in the pecking order. And then you can write some criteria according to what your organization does and, and how they generally measure things anyway, and, and to allow business users to consistently evaluate their data against it to come up with that. So that's one way that's how you go around doing it i would say you need to work with different people across your whole business so early on in a data governance initiative i would do something that you know is often called data discovery um and i would run workshops with your key stakeholders for probably every function or department in your organization and get them to tell you what data they use and what data they produce and once you've done that you can agree which data they may be the data owners for. And you can also then ask the data owner to tell you which of that data is the most important to them. Now, some data will be used by multiple people in different parts of your organization. So, you know, it's important that this is done with every single function because one function might say, yeah, that data is absolutely critical to us. It's really, really important. And somebody else might go, yeah, we kind of refer to it, but it's more of a contextual thing. It's not so important. So you need to get all the viewpoints so that you can identify its overarching level, which will be the highest level that anybody has reported it to. And then the second part of the question is, you know, what do you hold about it? Well, this is the kind of information that you're going to document in your data glossary. And I've seen people go totally overboard in collecting all sorts of stuff. So as with all things that um, data governance, I believe the best thing is to start with something really, really simple. You know, this isn't an academic exercise. We are documenting this data so that it can add some value so that the, the organization can understand what it is, where it is, what it's being used for, um, and who we should go to to make decisions on it. So, you know, surely that would be your basics. So if you have those things captured, um, that would be a really good starting place. And then after that, talk to your business users, ask them if they were looking up that data to find out more about it, what would it be helpful to know? And you can build from there, but don't start trying to capture everything you could possibly think about it because you'll be giving people lots of work to do and then they're going to rail against you. Whereas in reality, we want them to understand this isn't too onerous a task and it's going to have some really good benefits in the long term. So I hope that has been helpful. And if you've got any questions you'd like me to answer in future videos, just email them into questions at nicolaraskam.com.